morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm Christina with Jai Bhakti Yoga Foundation, and today we are working on our Friday Fun Flow. So before we begin our class, just a reminder that we do have our YouTube channel where you can go and subscribe to our programs that we have all kinds of wonderful classes for you to continue at your practice. And also we are in the midst of our fundraiser, so if you're so inclined to donate to Jai Bhakti Yoga Foundation's birthday fundraiser to keep the Yoga Dream Alive campaign, then please do so at our website, jaibhaktiyogafoundation.org. Let's begin. So today's class, you're just going to need your mat. And now for my more adaptive students, this is first and foremost, I just want to preface that my classes as a yoga teacher, I find that we work with different abilities of our bodies. So my classes are specifically designed to allow your body permission to open up at its own accord without overpowering or moving through poses very quickly. So we take our time in this classes. If that's not for you and you want something a little bit more athletic, then there are amazing yoga teachers out there that I'm very familiar with that I would love to share their information with with you. And I will put their information below. However, for our classes going forward, from this day on, you will have more modified and adapted slower paced classes to really allow your bodies to open up and heal from within. So we're gonna begin. So no props needed today. We are gonna work with just our bodies. Come to standing at the top of your mat and you're going to face forward. You might look at me if you have to, but just look in the direction of your mat forward, bring your feet together, spin the thighs inward, roll your shoulders back, pubic bone is going to scoop slightly under, drop the tailbone down, lift the chest, close your eyes, hands out by your sides, and we are now in Tadasana, first pose, principal pose, and then begin to breathe consciously. Yoga is a self-discovery of the body, Yoga is not the poses. The poses don't determine who we are. We open up through the breath. Notice the expansion and the contraction of the belly rising and falling. And then let's bring into your mind's eye today an intention for your practice. Setting attention to your intention. And as you're expanding in the chest, allow your belly to expand along with it. And as you're contracting through the abdominals, draw the belly button in. And then inhale, reach the arms up and the palms might even touch. And if that's not an option, let the hands just be in the direction of the spacing. And then exhale, clear the space, hands down by your sides, keep your legs strong. Don't get lazy in the legs. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, clear the space. Begin to match the breath, the inhalation. Allow the length of the inhale to match the length of the time it takes to bring the arms up. And as you exhale, allow the same length to take the hands down. Nice. And now we're going to bring the arms up. And this time, reach for opposite elbows as best you can. You can reach for opposite wrists. You can reach for your fingers. That's fine. Just go to your limitation. And then just observe where you are. Now, if you reach for opposite elbows and your ribs expanded really wide, then I'm going to ask you to bring your hands down towards your forearms and lace your ribs together kind of like you had a corset. And then from here, scoop that pelvic floor under again, squeeze the little thigh muscle. So we're very active in our legs. The legs are not moving. And we're going to tick-tock over to the right, lateral extension. A few more breaths. Notice any pins and needles, all the things in the bodies. We're going to bring awareness to this area and just focus on sending breath of intelligence there. Notice where you need to adapt the posture for you. Yoga happens for you, not to you, so adapt it for you. Inhale, let's come back to center. Exhale to the other side, lifting up through that side rib cage and then pressing actively through those beautiful legs, allowing that left elbow to wish to drizzle down towards the earth as you reach the other one towards the sky. Good. Couple of breaths here. Pubic bone slightly tucked so you're not pressing out your little tush tush. Good. And then let's come back to center and let's clear the space. Hands down. Go ahead and shake that out. Shake that out. Nice. 
Now go ahead and bend your knees and relax, right? Relax all that. Now let's go ahead and add some flow, right? So let's come to the top. We're going to do some lunging. Inhale, sweep the arms to the ability of lifting. Exhale, release the hands to heart center and step your right foot back, legs distance on the mat. Toes are high. Option to take the right knee down, which I'll begin at. Release your foot. Ensure knee ankle alignment here. Press your hands into your thighs, scoop the pelvic floor under, lift the chest, look up. Gentle back bend, Anjane Asana, Crescent Moon. Start to lift the left arm up if you like, start to lift the right arm up if you like, or you can have your hands at heart center or at Anya. As you're in this space, your next exhale, you're gonna start to press your hips forward, but not dump the weight, just press the hips forward, squeeze the muscles around the bone. Lift the chest, bring the elbows in the direction up together. Breathing, drawing your belly button up and in. Now slowly begin to release the elbows away. Release the hands down towards the ground. Let's find plank pose, tuck the right toes, extend the left leg back. Find the strength with the shoulders over the wrist and then take your knees down to the ground. Be mindful of your wrist. If you need to, tuck your thumb and make fists, but tuck your thumb into your fist. And if you need to, if you have rings like I do, I love my back, back to the nomadic rings. They're big though, so I have to turn them in so that I can rest on the flat portion, okay? And then from here, we come into a nice stable position. Third option is your forearms, okay? Now you have the option to stay here and then bring your chest forward, draw the belly up and in, plank position. You have another option to lift the leg. Stay here for two more rounds of breath. Draw your chest forward more. Concentrate only on breathing here, strengthening and breathing. Now we push back into the child's pose, hips back to your heels, knees together or to the width of the mat, untuck the toes. Let your chest drizzle down towards your thighs or down towards the earth. And allow your head to touch the ground. For some of you, that's bending the elbows and supporting your head with your hands. Back to Anya. Third eye chakra. Couple rounds of breath here. Just really tuning into your pranayama, your breath work. Now inhale, press your hands back down. Let's roll our way back into a tabletop position, all fours. Tuck your toes and let's make our way back to the plank pose. And remember, any variation of plank is welcome. Gently bend the knees, but take the hips up towards the sky and bring your stomach in the direction of your thigh. And then like a kitty cat or a dog stretching in the morning, go ahead and start to drip your chest down and push the front of the mat away from you. You can do this at a wall. You can do this with a chair. Go ahead and walk your dog or your kitty cat legs. Go ahead and walk. Now, if you need to put that right knee down, go right ahead and do so. Help your left foot forward. Look forward. Turn the right foot down. And we're gonna spin up into a warrior two. Pause, rest here. Knee over ankle. Push into the outside edge of your back foot. Take three breaths. And then very kindly cartwheel the hands down towards the direction of the earth. Walk your right hand out a little bit further. Press down into that hand and then start to lift the left arm up and coming into a twist. So it's kind of like a cougar or a jaguar walking through the forest. You're almost more animalistic in this particular pose. So it's not a, a full, what you're used to doing, hand on the other side and twisting. Now this one, we're out more to the side. And then bring your right hip back more. Squeeze the muscle around the left thigh bone. Draw your crown forward more. Now exhale, begin to release that left hand down towards the earth. Walk the right hand in. 
Begin to crawl your way up into warrior two as you open back up. Slide the right hand down the back leg as best you can. You can even have your hand at your hip. Reach the left arm overhead and come into peaceful warrior. You can also hold the back of your head. This is always a nice option. Gives you a nice shoulder opening, especially for the shoulder girdle, especially if you got tight shoulders. For your two. Inhale, straighten the legs, reach the arms up. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, straighten the front leg, reach the arms up. Remember, only as you can. If your arms aren't going all the way up today because their shoulders are tight today, then just bring the hands to heart center or bring the hands to cactus arms and then extend the arms out to warrior two. So we always have modifications to adapt to practice and still maintain the strengthening. Even bringing the elbows in and extending out is always a sweet option. So we always have options, y'all. Always. That's the beauty of the pose, man. All right, so let's come back to center. Step the right foot to meet the left. Inhale, the arms reach up. And let's just take a gentle bow down, hands to thighs. And then from here, take another breath and let your head come down. Maybe the stomach starts to draw in the direction of the thigh muscles as you bend your knees more. And just notice if this is where you're at today. For some of you, mm, I don't want to take my head down too much. Let's stay up high today. Cool, no problem, right? No problem. Just do what you can. Connect to breath. Connect to the sensations in the body. And then when you're ready, we're going to take that left leg back. Take the left knee down, hands to thighs, gaze is soft, crescent moon, open up the chest, lift the arms or hands to heart or bring the hands to your angnya chakra, third eye chakra. You can keep the toes tucked or untuck the toes. Squeeze the inner thighs towards one another and zip up through Uriana Bandha, Mula Bandha. We discuss those in depth in teacher training. Let's take two to three more. Draw the hips forward more, opening up through our psoas muscles, releasing all of this tension, negative energies. So beautiful, y'all. Now let's release, relax the hands down to the earth. Tuck the left toes in, straighten the back leg here. And then from this particular asana, let's walk the left hand out, open up into that kind of like that cougar pose. You're just opening up the chest. You wanna walk that left hand out. I'm gonna turn a little bit more. So instead of it being right at your foot, you wanna walk it out to the side. So your torso is between your knee, then there's this V and then your hands. You're creating a V. This is the portion of the torso area. And then you just let the hips come down and then lift that right arm up. You can do this with your knee on the ground, reaching the arm up to the sky. So you have many options to play with. Hand can stay here on the thigh and push the thigh like And then we're gonna inhale, kind of turn your left foot, sweep up, warrior two. And I'm gonna turn around so I can face you, so you're not looking at my back. Good. Warrior two. And now here, just taking this moment to take the position that you did before. Straighten the leg, bring the elbows in. Exhale, take the arms out, right? So go ahead and play around with what feels comfortable for you in this pose and this flow. Now, if you wish, you can take the arms up above, reach for the other opposite elbow. So the one that does not feel natural to you. And notice what that feels like when you play with this particular asana. Asana meaning that pose, literally that pose or that seat. So as I find it's also very important, a lot of feedback, and I love feedback. So um, what are all these words that y'all say when we teach yoga? So I want to make sure that I'm, at least in my English classes, translating English and Sanskrit so you know what we're talking about. And um, 
Notice what that feels like. And then allow your body to rest a little deeper into the position. Come up on the next breath, warrior two. Cartwheel the hands down. Let's take ourselves to plank pose, please. Plank pose. Again, modify your plank always as needed. Keep that tummy nice and strong, looking forward. Press back, child's pose. Inhale, gently rounding through cat spine. Not everybody is comfortable with this rotation, specifically if you have any sensitive vertebrae that are popping forward and if, or out. So if that's the case, you're gonna to wanna to stay more neutral and just come more into tabletop. Everyone else, go ahead and round, tucking the pubic bone towards your belly button. And then come through tabletop, drop the belly, lift the chest for cow pose, if that's an opportunity for you. Exhale, press back into your child's pose. And we're gonna flow like this three more times. Be very mindful of your knees. So if that's not an option for you, you can come back to standing. Hands here on your thighs, and you're gonna round your spine, and you're gonna let your chest drip down. You're gonna come back up. You might even come as far up as to standing, simulating a plank position, bending the knees, dripping the chest forward through a cow position and then rolling through a cat spine. So this might be your variation, and this is beautiful. We'll do two more together. I'll maintain the modification. And then last one. And then we're all gonna reach our hands down back behind us towards the earth. If you're touching the earth, those of you that are on the ground, Touch the earth or touch your, your tools if you have tools around you that you want to use. Lifting the heart up, stretching the shoulders. I'm going to even invite you now to interlace your fingers and then reach the shoulder blades towards each other. This might not be an option, so grab your couch cushion, a pillow, or socks. Pull the sock if you have your yoga belt. Go ahead and use the yoga belt but draw the energy so towards one another that you're opening up the chest. You're gonna feel a sensation. Now, resist the urge to wince the face. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Everyone, we're gonna fold forward. Those of you on the ground, your forehead might touch the ground. Those of us up above, we're just gonna come a little bit forward here. Remember, if you are getting vertigo or dizziness, you're not going to bring your head below your heart. You're just going to come, just going to bow, just bow to yourself or reach your hands back. Inhale, reach the arms up, release. Exhale, clear the space. Those of you on the ground, extend your legs out long in front of you. Those of you standing, if you wish to join us on the ground, we're gonna come all the way down to what we call Paschimottanasana forward fold. If that's not for you, then you're gonna go ahead and pose. So let's go ahead and come on down. Take your time to get there. I see we might have just a little bit of wonkiness with some internet towards the end here. So we're almost done, so it's okay. We'll, be, we'll wrap up slowly. So let's lift our chest, bend the knees, please. Okay, good. Reach the hands down. So those of you that are still standing, you're gonna be in mountain pose. Press the feet down into the earth. Those of us in, in uh, staff position, Dandasana, flex the feet, lift the chest. Press the hands down towards the ground, maybe even more so, and then start to exhale, extend the legs, opening up the hamstrings. Draw the lower belly up and in. Nice. Now, if you're standing, you might want to come to a wall. Otherwise, bring your right knee in towards your chest. Hug yourself here. I'll show both variations. The standing version is more of a balance and core strengthening. The seated variation is uh, more of an organ twist. So let's go ahead and stay here. Or you can press your right foot over your left thigh so you have some options. You're going to hug your knee in with your left hand 
start to look behind you. Place your right hand on the ground. And if this is where you are today, stay right here. You can also start to keep looking back if that's for you. For those of you that are standing or using the wall, your right knee is in. Your toes might touch the wall or your knee might be on the wall. Your right hand is at your hip and you're just gonna look back behind you if that's for you or keep looking at the wall and both hands can be on the wall and look over your shoulder. So you can play like that too. Always modify and adapt. You can use a chair and hold on to a chair. Now we come back to the center space. Extend the leg out long. Please shake that out. You can tap, tap, tap. And we're gonna come to the other side. So the left knee comes in. I'm just gonna spin so I can keep my gaze with you all. And then we're gonna take that left foot over, if you want to, hug and twist. Now, if it's a little too intense or the foot doesn't stay all the way down when you cross it over your right foot, then don't do it. Just leave it on the left side, leave it on the inside and work towards that direction. So we don't have to ever stress out or strain ourselves in yoga. We just let it happen for us. We look behind and we breathe. Keep your, your legs, keep your muscles very active though, so you're still very engaged. Just really enjoy being a part of the practice of the journey. And now let's inhale, come back to center. Exhale, release the foot down. If you're standing, release the foot out. Let's shake that out. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Good. We're going to take a forward fold now so you can bend your knees and flex your toes so that all your toes are pointing towards your face, not that one's pointing away. You want everyone pointing towards you. And then reach the hands up or in heart space. Exhale like I'm poking you in the belly. Draw your belly in and start to come forward. Once you find a little stretchy point, pause. Release your hands anywhere on your legs. They can be behind your thighs. And then as you exhale, start to kick through your heels and notice what happens in the lower back. If you started rounding in the lower back, lift yourself up. And then push actively through your heels and notice your breath. We're gonna be here for three more breaths. Lower back hamstring stretch. This brings a lot of attention to those of us like myself with sciatica, working on strengthening around spaces that are causing the tension. Engaging the thigh muscles, kicking through the heels, activating the hamstrings. Don't worry about how low you go. Two more rounds of breath now. Really nice and full, really mindful breathing here, y'all. All right, now when you're ready, you can stay here, hang out if it feels good. Or start to very slowly come back up, okay? Now start to bring your feet together and we're gonna come into the butterfly stretch. Baro Kanasana. This one's really, really good with, with tools underneath it. But for right now, we're just gonna flutter the knees. Flutter the knees. <laughs> and then we're gonna come into some Sufi circles. So you're gonna round the spine. You're gonna come over to one side and then you're gonna let your chest lift and drip your heart. And you come to the other side and notice your little flutters might stop because now you're adding a new movement. A new movement. Marry the breath to the motion. And now reverse your circle. Connect to your breath, your rhythm, not mine.
what is coming up for you here? What do you notice? Where are you going? Where are your thoughts? Come back to your breath. Come back to your body. Let's come to center. Roll yourself up. Take your knees together. Walk your feet out wide. Bring your hands behind you. Lazy stretch. Just chilling, right? Move from side to side. Move from side to side. Let's drop the knees over to the left. Take the right hand with you. Take it as far as you can go behind you. Look behind you. Now for some of you, this is very comfortable. So you might even start to walk yourself down onto your forearms. And then maybe even look behind all the way over to the left side of the room. Others of you, you probably looking at me like with seven heads. And so you might be right here today and that's fine and you just hang right on out and you start looking over that left shoulder, gazing over, working on the opening. Yoga is not a competition, it's a completion. It's a discovery of who we are. Everybody is different. That's the beauty of the practice. Inhale back to center and exhale to the other side. Again, all the variations that you took, he went all the way down, looked around, stayed a little bit higher. Just breathe. Just breathe. You are not your thoughts. Inhale, let's come back to center. And give yourself a hug here as we drape over the legs as best we can. Those of you at a wall or standing, bowing to yourself. We're gonna make our way into Shavasana, so allowing ourselves permission to roll down onto our backs. I will have the mic pack on my back, so I'm not gonna be able to roll down onto my back, but I'm gonna sit here in meditation space with you all for the next 10 breaths as I guide you into this meditation slash Shavasana. So as you're rolling down with control, lowering into the earth, I invite you to take one more pose, one more pose that really serves you best. What is it that you need personally? Is it happy baby pose or supine twist or bridge, wheel? What do you need? What do you need for yourself? And take that for the next five breaths. For those of you that have no idea what I just said, don't worry about it. Take Shavasana, relax, lay down, take a load off. Discover what works for you. You're in the comfort of your own sacred space, so go ahead and let out a sigh out your mouth. Allow the yoga of sound. Let things come out. Let that sound come out the mouth. Ah. Let it out. Maybe it's a tear. Maybe it's an emotional relief. Maybe it's a burst of laughter, which has happened before. And just allow those emotions to penetrate and swirl through. Allow them to come through. And then as you're making your way into Shavasana, if you have anything around you that you like to utilize for support, use it. If your chin tends to poke up towards the sky more, I will encourage you to place a pillow or a blanket underneath your head as to bring the chin slightly towards the chest so as to keep the head in alignment, the cervical spine from being impinged. If your lower back is sensitive, please take the knees together and the feet apart for constructive rest. Once you're in your space, relax your feet. You might even add a little wiggle or a spread of the toes. Notice that texture of the ground beneath your feet. And release that, let it go, let it go. Notice the calves, the shin. 
your knees. You might even be moving these parts. And then let that go. Notice your thighs. And the hips and the groin. And then let that go. Notice sensation in the belly. And the lower back middle back. Notice sensation through the ribs and then let it go. Notice sensation through the upper back, passing through the chest. Notice the shoulders opening and broadening as though a gentle hand was pressing the shoulders open. And then let this all go. Relax the arms and the wrists and the hands. Notice if the palms are up to receive or if the palms are down to ground. Relax your neck, the base of your head. Wrapping around the back of your skull, towards your forehead, relax your forehead, your eyes, your eyebrows, your jaw, your tongue, your throat. Let it all go. In the space of meditation, visualize a vibrant light shining around you, holding you. For a moment, the space between the eyebrows relaxes. And a color or shape might appear. Acknowledge the color and let it go. We remain here in Shavasana meditation for the next 30 seconds to 60 seconds. These moments that you'll never get back. Savor each one. Oh, 
sabe turbar en Vargo de Guasia de Mahi, y yo yo na fracio daya. Begin to bring awareness back into your body into your fingers and your toes. Breathing life force energy back into your sacred space. Later today, you can pause this video here and remain in Shavasana for as long as you like, resonating with the sound of the Gayatri Mantra. We're slowly beginning to rise up into a comfortable seat, closing our class together and getting a nice start to our day, or a nice close to our evening if you're watching this later. Palms together at the heart, we bow and honor each other for our practice, for our collective of healing. Although we may not see each other, that we practice in unison in spirit, mind and body connection that we are a global community of yogis, uplifting and raising the vibration of the world each and every breath. All of our unique gifts are discovered each and every day as we step onto the mat and take our practice off the mat. The light that lives in me honors and appreciates and is so blessed to lead you through your journey and be a part of it. Om Shanti 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 Om Namah Shivaya Om Jai Bhagwan Ki Jai Namaste